I've told this story before and I'll probably tell it again. Um, we had just moved drugs to Boston and I knew it. And I don't normally know that we just moved drugs to it somewhere, but we had. And then the Boston bombing happened. And um, I've kind of been told that there was something suspicious that went on with the Boston bombing with the, that, the murder of that guy at the um, at MIT, the, the security guard. Um, I don't really know what happened there, but um, I knew that our drugs were there and uh, the type of place that we would move drugs is a marathon. Like we're, we're the type of people that will uh, be drug dealers at a, a major athletic sporting event and, um, and be people that are participants in that event because we're actually, um, so a lot of us don't even do drugs. Um, so after that happened, I was really curious about why it happened. And I was wondering if it was because because people had been hacking my Facebook and this girl had just contacted me about moving to Boston and I didn't like that she had said Boston because I knew we had just moved drugs there. And then a bomb blew up. So shortly after that, um, a, uh, someone blew up a fertilizer bomb at the West Texas Fertilizer Company, which wasn't a fertilizer company, it was a drug lab. And I traveled west to help with cleanup because I felt like those were my people and I felt like they needed me there. They needed someone that was brave. I, I felt like I needed to be brave and I needed to go to into that community and help them. This was before my hunger strike. And um, on my way, or while I was there, I ran into my friend who went to Baylor Law School and he told me that West Texas wasn't a fertilizer plant. And I'm pretty sure that American intelligence was very close with Israeli intelligence and sharing information about it and stuff like that. And um, Benjamin Net Netanyahu's kind of a psychopath. And um, what happened is the Israelis blew it up and I'm pretty sure the Americans suspect that. Um, even the Jewish Americans know it. And so is there a curse on the Israeli people because of Benjamin Netanyahu and the Israeli intelligence people? Yeah, and it's not just because of the way that they blew up West Texas, it's because of the things they've done um, in other parts of the world. Does that mean there are there's a curse on the Jewish people? No, but there's a curse on Israel. And um, if I was a Jewish person that lived in Israel, I'd want to get out of that country um, and I wouldn't want to come to the United States. I'd go somewhere else. Um, so the real reason I'm talking right now is because um, I implied one time that the English government is the reason that 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 the English the the UK variant of COVID-19 is in the United States so much. And I don't think they purposely spread it. Um, but um, this morning I was thinking about how much I love all these English artists, and I was thinking about this TV show on Netflix with the fairies, I don't know what it's called, it was like number one on Netflix, and it seems like it's an English show because there's one American on it, and I really enjoyed that show. And <clears throat> English people tend to be very pleasant, and um, English spies tend to be exhausting, and they are very, very bold. Are they bold like the Israelis, like the Israelis will blow up a bomb on American soil because they own the world? This little tiny country thinks they own the entire world. They're not exhaust, exhausting like that, but they're exhausting the point that I don't want to be allies with them, even though I think it's very, very difficult not to be allies with England. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult when you have like Doctor Who, who, and you have like all these English shows that you love on television, and, um, and, you, and you feel like the English people are kind of an extension of the United States. Um, and, and then, but then you don't want to be allies with them because they are that biggest sons of bitches. And it's really hard to explain how furious I get about certain English people. Not, I'm not even talking about my brother-in-law. Like, I feel like my brother-in-law wants to join the cult. You know, he wants to, he wants to like, please let me sell drugs. Please let me sell drugs. And it's like, no, <laughs> but, um, uh, I mean, do, do you really think we need more people? And that's the thing about like people that act like I have to do it when I'm the spokesperson is like, I don't think you get it. Like. It, we don't have to try to find people. There are a lot of people that want to be a part of this this organization. But um, I, I'm not saying my brother-in-law wants to sell drugs. I'm just saying, like, theoretically, he probably does now at this point. Um, but um, what I'm trying to say is um, 
what you see on the surface, which is Israel's our best friend. We give them so many weapons, they're, they're great, is not what's happening beneath the surface. Those people are a bunch of little bitches. And they, they, like, they think they're protecting themselves because the Holocaust, the Holocaust gives us an excuse to do anything we want. And it's like you actually put your entire country in danger by being, um, by being what, what would Socrates say? He'd say, you're a busybody. Like you're getting in people's business you shouldn't, and you shouldn't be in, in their business. So the spy game is a very complicated game, and I think it's very difficult for Americans to actually know what's going on when um, there are that many Jewish people that are lobbyists in the United States.